Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and welcome back to the weekly ranking show where we go through all the ATP and WTA rankings for the week. And we had some big changes in the top 10 with some massive names coming back. Of course, next week, we've got most of the top 10 for the men and women playing, but let's go have a look at the results from last week. We had five events in total, two on the ladies and three on the men's tour. Let's go have a look at who won. So starting with the WTA, we had some upset wins with Sharif taking out Zachary in the final of Palmer, a clay court event, 7-5-6-3, and she got a boost in the rankings for that win. And over in the Tallinn Open, we had Krijakova beating Contivate, 6-2-6-3 in the final. She gets her first win of the year and her first title beating the hometown favorite on an indoor hard court. So it was a day for the underdogs over on the WTA. Having a look at the ATP, we had had the Korea Open with Nishioka getting the win over Shapovalov, 6-4, 7-6. So good to see him winning a trophy. And he took out Shapo, who's had a bad time in finals of late. Over at the Sofia Open, we had Huzla beating Runa in the final, a very unlikely final. 6-4, 7-6 to lift his first trophy on the ATP. So fun to see that. And then at the Tel Aviv Open, Novak Djokovic back to his winning way. 6-3, 6-4, beating Marin Cilic in the final. The only... I guess, final of the bunch that was straightforward and predictable. Let's go to the WTA rankings for this week. And a lot of these players are playing next week, but we did see some big changes. Sviantek stays at number one with Jabur at number two, but Bedosa, she goes down to number four with Contivate going up to number three. And that's because Contivate made the final of Tallinn this week and Bedosa did not play this week. So she didn't get to add any points to her title. Pagula, she goes down to number six with Sabalenka going up to number five. And that's because Pagula lost a bunch of points that she had won this time last year. So Sabalenka gets a boost despite not playing. Zachary, she adds a lot of points to her title, closing in back on that number five spot or number six spot. It's still at number seven for this week. Goff at number eight, Halep at nine, and Garcia rounds out the top 10 for this week. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and still only the two players qualified with Sviantek and Jabur qualified for the WTA finals, which is actually happening in about four weeks' time. So with six spots left, they'll start filling up pretty quickly. Pagula, she's at number three with Goff at number four. Garcia at five, Sabalenka at six, Kazakina at seven, but Maria Sakkari, she goes up to number eight, overtaking Kudamatova, who didn't play last week. So the final of Palmer helping out Sakkari. Kudamatova just outside of that top eight at number nine. And Belinda Bencic, she pushes out Bedosa after making the semifinals in Estonia. Bedosa didn't play last week. So Bencic, she rounds at the top 10 for this week. Bedosa just outside. But a lot of those names that I just mentioned are playing next week, especially those players ranked from seven and below are all playing next week so we could get a whole different finals race next week depending on the results having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week and Krejcikova she's gone up four spots number 23 in the world after winning in Estonia last week of course the former French Open champion she used to be number two in the world as well she's slowly climbing back up the ranks and Sharif she's gone up 26 spots number 48 in the world very close to her career high ranking so two players who played well last week and caused the upsets in the finals, got a boost in the ranks. Players that have gone down in the rankings this week, we have Van Udvank. She drops down 12 spots, number 52 in the world, after losing a bunch of points from a tournament that she'd won last year at this time. And Vondrusova also dropping down 25 spots to number 89 in the world. Again, same as Van Udvank, just not being able to replicate the points that she'd won this time last year. Having a look at the ATP rankings now, and not too many changes, with Carlos Alcaraz staying at number one. But Rafa does overtake Rude. So Rude goes down to number three, with Rafa going up to number two, despite Rafa not playing. And that's because Rude lost a lot of points from this time last year, having won an event. So Casper Rude drops a lot of points, drops down below Rafa now. Medvedev stays at four with Alexander Zverev at five. Sidzi Pass at six. Djokovic at seven, despite winning in Tel Aviv. He still can't leapfrog City Pass just yet. Norrie's at eight. Rublev at nine. But Yannick Sinner, he drops out of the top 10 after failing to defend the points from the Sofia Open. Of course, got injured as well. So it wasn't a great week. He drops down two spots, making way for her catch who jumps back into the top 10 this week. And a lot of those names in that top 10 are playing this week. So expect to see some changes next week as well. Having a look at the ATP finals race now, and we have added Novak Djokovic into the finals race because there is a rule that if you have won a Grand Slam and you are in the top 20, you do get automatic entry to the ATP finals, even if you're not in the top eight. So we've got Djokovic on the list now, just to keep an eye on where he's at. Currently ranked number 15 in the race to the finals. So he is qualified at this moment. We'll keep an eye on him over the next few weeks. But we've only got four players officially qualified with Alcaraz, Nadal, Rude, and Tsitsipas. Medvedev's not far away. He's at number five with Rublev at six. Ojeel Yassim at seven. Zverev at eight. 
and her catch. He rounds out the top nine with, like I said, Djokovic hanging out there at the number 15 spot. And we'll keep an eye on him over the next few weeks because his ranking might not actually matter that much because he did win Wimbledon. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings that are outside the top 10 this week. And Nishioka, he goes to a career high ranking of 41 in the world after winning the Korea Open. That's 15 spots higher than last week. So... Good little boost for him. And Hoosler's gone up 31 spots to number 64 in the world. A career high for him after winning in the Sofia Open. So the two guys that caused the upsets last week, both getting a boost in the rankings and career high rankings for them. Players that have gone down in the rankings this week, Gael Monfils, he's gone down five spots after failing to defend the points that he made this time last year at the Sofia Open. And Krajanovic also dropping down 10 spots after failing to defend the points from this time last year. So a couple of guys that didn't play this week, dropping down the ranks, losing a lot of points. So there you have it. They are the rankings for this week. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you reckon about the rankings? Are you surprised that Djokovic didn't get a boost this week? I'm a little bit shocked he didn't. I thought that maybe winning a 250 event that he hadn't won before might get him up the ranks. But as I mentioned, a lot of players are playing this week on both the men and the women's tour. So expect maybe some big changes next week to the rankings. But let me know down in the comments below. What do you reckon about the rankings this week? Is there anything that shocks you?